Hello, and welcome to the Project Good podcast. I'm your host, Anne-Marie Hilton. Project Good is a social impact podcast interviewing experts and advocates about the pressing problems that we face globally and hearing how they suggest we move forward in the future. The Project Good podcast is brought to you by Project Good Work. The goal of this podcast is to inspire people and organizations to develop a mindset that can move others to positive action regarding the complex social issues facing people and the planet. For February, we're focusing on the topic of Black Hair and the Crown Act. The Crown Act, which stands for Creating a Respectful and Open World for Natural Hair, is a law that prohibits race-based hair discrimination, which is the denial of employment and educational opportunities because of hair texture or protective hairstyles such as braids, locks, twists, or bantu knots. Black or African-American hair in its natural state has been seen as problematic almost since the beginning of America. It has been regarded as not real hair, not professional, and certainly not beautiful. With many Black and African-American people often defined in our society by their hair and skin, this has prevented many African-Americans from opportunities in the workforce and in life. It becomes critical to understand the root of the problem. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing and discussing the Crown Act with Jennifer Atkins, Chief Executive Officer and President of JennyCap and the founder of the CrownAct.org. Ms. Atkins has been passionate about advocating for healthy black hair for a long time, creating her signature protective hair garments in the mid-90s. Let's get into the interview. Most non-Black or African-American people are unaware of the fact that 80% of Black women say they must change their hair from its natural state to fit in at the office. Still, another shocking fact is that only 14 states in the United States have outlawed the ability for employers and educational institutions to discriminate against somebody's natural hair, meaning how it grows out from their head or hairstyle. The Crown Act, which was passed in, which was created, excuse me, in 2019 by Dove and the Crown Coalition in partnership with then State Senator Holly J. Mitchell of California to ensure protection against discrimination based on race-based hairstyles by extending statutory protection to hair texture and protective styles in the workplace and public schools. Advocating for black hair is a full-time job. And today, I'll be discussing the realities of black hair with Crown Act advocate Jennifer Atkins, who is Chief Executive Officer and President of Jenny Cap, a protective hair garment company. Welcome, Ms. Atkins. Hello. Good to be here. Yes. Thank you for your time today. And um, I'm looking forward to this discussion about uh, uh, black hair and all the, <laughs> the problems and uh, different things that come with it. Um, so before, though, that we get into the questions, um, what inspired you to start your company, uh, Jenny Cap? Sure. So Jenny Cap was founded under the principles that, you know, myself, I am African-American woman. I have a curl pattern to my natural hair. And so I have to sleep in something at night uh, to curate, you know, um, you know, maintenance to so that I don't have to, you know, re- uh, do my hair in terms of untangling it, and it just makes for a better day if I if I sleep on something or wrap my hair, as they say, overnight. So I created Jenny Cap because that that allowed me to not only have something to protect my hair, keep the moisture um, in my hair, because you know no moisture equals breakage. Um, it also gave me something, you know, to keep, you know, maybe oils out of my pillowcase and then something pretty to to put on my head to do this. At that time, things looked pretty uh, unattractive. So that's why I created the, the signature Jenny Cap style. It had a wide band. It was more comfortable. It had a double lining. So the lining that was on their hair was not the same lining that's on the exterior part of the cap. Um, so a lot went into my design and I actually have a utility patent on that design. It, it's just expired, but I was really proud of, of that design because it really met the needs of so many women that up until then, I was really going to sleep and just kind of like rags or scarves or things that came off and really didn't work. So that's what why the Jenny Cap company was founded. 
Excellent. I know that, um, you know, uh, for most, uh, you know, of course, all hair is different, but um, curly hair in itself, I know, um, is uh, very delicate. A lot of people don't realize that. I think um, there's always a a misconception, I guess, that uh, curly hair, just because, you know, it has um, a different texture, uh, people have a misconception that it's uh, stronger than uh, straight hair, but it uh, really does need to be um, taken care of. Um, in a in a much gentler um, fashion, so that is uh, wonderful that um, that you have uh, created this company um, that I'm sure has helped uh, millions of women. Absolutely, and you know you're right because curly hair can break because it's got it's got those curls, it's got those bends, and you know if something stays in that position too long, it can literally break. And that's why the breakage is such the issue. So, but, but what I want also want people to know is that, you know, uh, black hair or curly hair, textured hair, it's actually a very versatile, high performing hair too, because imagine being able to take your hair from a coil all the way to a straight needle. Like literally, that's what um, the hair can do as well. Is it? It could. There's so many things I can do with my hair. I can straighten it. I can texturize it. I can curl it. Um, you know, I can braid it. I can, you know, twist it. And and, and through all that, it won't come loose. So it's really like a a, a unique coil type of a natural <laughs> natural structure that um, allows you a lot of versatility. So it's not that people should see curly hair as you know a problem or an obstacle or something to 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 fight with or anything. I think it should be embraced. I think people who don't have you know curly hair or textured hair you know, um, look at it like, uh, this is like the high performance stuff here. I mean, we can go from zero to 60 with this type of hair, whereas it's much harder to take someone who has non-textured hair and then try to make it into textured hair. It's almost impossible to do that because the curl is coming out of my scalp and Mm -hmm. it's just, it's really, it's really hard to do. Now it can be attempted, but it's, it's really not the same. Whereas I can relax my hair and then put a flat iron to it. And then voila, I mean, I've got like really super straight hair if, if I wanted it, if I wanted that, right? So it's very versatile. It's a versatile type of uh, curl pattern, um, whereas I can straighten it or use a curl pattern. If I want to put water on it, then the curl pattern steps back. So, um, but yeah, but it is weak too because the breakage is there. That, that's that's the bad side of it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Side of it. Yeah. Um, one of the things that um, it's kind of, I guess, uh, in some ways, I guess, uh, 2020 is, uh, they always say history repeats itself. So I kind of feel like 2020 is uh, like we're going back to the 60s, but in a different way that is uh, like a high tech 60s. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. So that's so that's what I feel that we are currently experiencing. And with that, um, before, of course, 2020, there has been this movement, I guess, um, I guess I would say maybe it's been uh, maybe a decade or more of what they call the natural hair movement. Um, And the natural hair movement is uh, embracing your hair, um, uh, specifically mostly for, I would say, African-American and and uh, black people um, uh, around the world at the way that it, uh, however it grows out of your head. Um, do you think that this movement is here to stay or is it just a, uh, something is trendy? Oh no, it's absolutely here to stay. And that's because it's sort of like, imagine like my aunts or my aunts and, and they're probably like in their sixties and seventies, they were never ever able to professionally wear their hair naturally outside of their house. So imagine you, Miss, Miss, Miss Hilton, imagine you with your type of hair, not African-American hair, right? So imagine you having to change the structure and style of your hair for your whole life when you went outside your door. So the hair that grows out of your head, you you cannot go and get a job and be respected with that hair. You have to get it changed or cover it. Wear a wig. I don't know what you're going to do, but that's what we've lived with. Imagine that. 
<laughs> it's kind of hard to imagine. So it's expensive. You know, when, <laughs> <laughs> that's another way to put it. And um, and I'll get to that point too. The 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 African American hair goods market. We call it product is enormous it's crazy it's the biggest hair care market like on the planet like there's way more products for me than there is for you <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Be- because we can do like like i said we go back to that performance and versatility aspect i can do about 10 things more with my hair than you could do with your hair <laughs> and that's why you need product right you got you got to have oils and butters and blah, blah, blah. you got all that stuff but um but to get back to the whole thing of, you know, is this a trend or not? I don't think it's a trend. I think it is something that people are finally relieved that Mm -hmm. if they do wear braids, it's okay. Just put it in a nice style, you know? Um, Mm -hmm. Kinky hair is, is not the monster anymore. It's okay. You know, I mean, everyone should have nice grooming, but mm-hmm. grooming in of itself is one thing. But to say that this type of hair texture is just not acceptable, that is no longer acceptable. And so the Crown Act law is making corporations and businesses say um, <laughs> it's not for you to to say that this skin color or this hair type don't come here with that. You, you can't say that. Just like you can't say skin color. You can't mm-hmm. say this hair. It's just because it's naturally, that's the way we're born with it. So so I'm happy that everybody is coming around. Most, a lot of people are. I think over time, more people will. And it's also a big problem in schools. Mm-hmm. So many times you will have, I hear these atrocious stories of people getting their locks cut. Like somebody taking mm-hmm. scissors to a child's hair and mm-hmm. cutting it. Like there was this one story when this, this young guy, he was on a wrestling uh, match and he had these long locks. And in order to continue the wrestling match, he had to cut his locks on the spot. And, you know, he was only 16 and he didn't like know his rights and he cut his hair, you know? So... Well, you know, that's kind that, of humiliating, I would say, at that point. And so, right, right, and I don't know. Maybe it was his religion, because you know, locks have to do with Rastafarian. That's like a religion that has yeah. to do with abstaining. You know, so many people just don't understand the the deep roots, pun intended, of hair when it comes to the black community, and it's a struggle to try to figure out. Okay. Who am I going to be today? Am I going to be, because if I, if I wear my hair natural, then I'm sort of making a statement, which I'm really not. I'm not trying to make a statement. But if you do wear your hair natural, you're quote unquote making a statement, whereas you, you just try and be yourself. And so that's another aspect of the natural hair mo- movement that we, we need to understand that I have the versatility to do that. I can go natural and I can go straight. And I'm the same person either way. <laughs> do you, well, do you feel that um, that that you know? I, I guess I have I have mixed feelings about this. But do you feel that Black people need to educate non-Black people about their hair? I do. I okay. absolutely do. I think I think Black people um, can educate you know non-Black people about hair um, whenever it's sort of a safe place to do that. I mean, you can't can't force people to listen, but, um, you know, when, when, it, when it feels safe to do so, you know, you can make like a soft joke or you can say something, you know, or, or if somebody says something, you know, don't don't get offended or mad. Um, I, I happen to have a long hair and, um, Someone, a young uh, Hispanic girl asked me, or a young, she was Mexican, and she asked me, um, she, no, she, she touched my hair. She said, oh, wow, it is soft. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, so I am not going to get offended. I am, it's not the time. <laughs> He says, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I said, and then I just asked the question, you know, is this the first time you've touched uh, this? Uh, textured hair before um because that's another thing like what what do you call it it's like it's you can just call it textured hair 
You don't need to call it nappy or kinky clay and all these crazy names. Just it's textured hair or natural hair. You know, I guess. Have you ever, you know, this is the thing I have never been able to understand, I guess. Why do you think that um, uh, there is a, uh, a a driving need, I guess, in, in many people in the society that they really want to to touch <laughs> black hair. I don't I don't under I've never been able to understand that because the thing is, okay, I, I guess because I have a heebie jeebie <laughs> syndrome, right? I have heebie jeebies. I don't want to touch anybody's anything <laughs> if I don't if I don't have to, right? I, I, this, but but of course, like I said, I have a heebie-jeebie syndrome. I, I don't want to touch people that I don't know because I'm like, you know, I don't know about their, you know, their grooming habits, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and so I just don't understand. I guess uh, this is I, I have never been able to, with touching. Uh, well, yeah, well, well, and the 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 touching, like you know, I I don't understand, like. Why? Yeah. Why am I? I, I don't know if I'm a weird person that I I have a heebie jeebie syndrome. I don't want to be touching strangers. I, yeah, I think I think I get it. I think I get it because imagine this. So black hair is like no other hair. Like people all over, all different colors of people, brown people. You know, they all have pretty pretty much the same texture. Right. Mm -hmm. So Mexican people have the same texture, technically, not exactly. Then most, you know, white people, Asian people, people from India, people from, from the Middle East, depending on how much African you have in your blood, you have this, that same straight texture out of the scalp texture. When you get to the African-American hair or the African hair. Uh, it's, it's, it's one or the other to me. And then there's stuff in between, but you know, I'm saying, okay. So when you get to this straight up black hair, um, <laughs> we could call it just straight up black hair, right? It looks uh -huh. like a little, like a little Afro. It looks like a little, like a little puff ball. Like, mm -hmm. like you're like, like we'll just be, we'll just talk straight, right? Like, so white hair would, would never be like a little puff ball. We call them Afro puffs. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> like right. so, an Afro puff has got to be very intriguing to someone whose hair looks nothing like that. And now we go back even further when when I was a little girl and all the dolls, no dolls had Afro puffs, zero. In fact, the dolls now don't have Afro puffs. <laughs> so uh -huh. everyone is familiar with a white textured hair. Everybody. You either have it or you had a doll that had it. Mm -hmm. You just, you, it's not, there's not a fascination because there's not, uh, because because of the familiarity, right? So I think if someone is, is being real and being bold enough and courage and feeling in a safe place and they see someone with hair like an Afro puff and they say, oh, can I touch it? And like, that has literally happened to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> can I touch your hair? I was like, wow. <laughs> yes, I, I, I just have never, I have never understand the, I, I never understood the fascination with that. I, I just, yeah, I, yeah, I, you know, um, because, yeah, because, you know, it's, it's another person, like, you know, um, you know, people can do a bunch of things with their hair and, you know, I've never had a, a desire to like, you know, reach out and grab somebody's hair that they, you know, that I don't know. <laughs> you know, but, but, well, you know, the, the interesting, another way to look at it is that it, it's not, it's not a, it's not from a standpoint of ickiness. Cause if something is icky, like you wouldn't want to touch like a big boil on someone's face. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. But, but it's come from a, it's coming from a standpoint of just not being familiar and then mm -hmm. being fascinated by, wow, I finally get to touch this. I, I always wanted to see how it felt because most <laughs> people think it's <laughs> like a Brillo pad, core, like course, like hard. And, but, mm -hmm. but they touch, it's like, oh, it's literally like soft cotton. Yes. Yeah, it's soft. <laughs> right. I think they think that it's hard because it's standing mm -hmm. straight up. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's not hard. It's soft. So there goes this weird thing about black hair. Like, what is it? How does it, I mean, it literally would stand straight up, like straight up in the air. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's like gravity defining. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it defies a lot. It defies gravity. So, so it, it, it's a fascinating thing to have black hair. It it can do all these things. It's a high performer. That's what I call it. <laughs> now, yeah. now I guess um, you know after I guess uh, uh, educating, of course, um, uh, non. Uh, black people about um, uh, black hair. Um, what are, I guess, um, what are some other things that you think that um, you'd like non-black people to know about black hair? You know, you've already said that it's it's soft. Right, right. It's soft. Um, again, the versatility and and what you can do with it, and depending on the different chemicals that you can put on it you can bring it all the way up and take it all the way down. You can color it, you can do so much more with it. So it's very versatile. So it's soft, not hard. It's versatile, not limiting. Um, and it, it's pretty, you know, it's full. Um, it's kind of like uh, calling black hair ugly or limiting or disgusting or unacceptable. It's kind of like calling a pregnant woman's belly fat. You know, it's mm -hmm. no, it's not fat. There's something more going on here. Right? <laughs> yes. mm -hmm. um, so if if we're able to grow um, in our perspectives, you know, coming out of a pandemic, we hopefully we have learned that, you know, the human race has got to get it together. You got to figure it out and get it together as a people and just start recognizing you know, you don't need to hurt someone's feelings. You, you, you don't need to be, you don't need to put, you know, your foot on someone's neck in order for you to feel better about yourself. So you don't need to make this hair bad hair and then your hair good hair for what? So just kind of think about, I would say for people who don't have black hair, you know, try Try to take that second look and that and try to stop yourself when when you're looking at that hair and say, oh, it looks dirty because it's because it's not like your hair. Black mm -hmm. hair is going to look a certain way if um, if it doesn't have a chemical in it, it's going to be it's, it's going to have, you know, that little Afro puff look. And so let's stop making that into you know, some type of limitation because it doesn't match this hair that someone else has. Let's stop thinking that way and start trying to maybe come up with a tool that you think of like, okay, this person's part of the human race and we're all uniquely different. And isn't it wonderful that that hair is on this planet and my hair is on the planet and there's things in between and just keep it rolling. I think that that's um, a way that people who who are, are maybe if they can think about it and then doing an internal check can mm -hmm. can use that as a tool to to tell themselves that you know black hair isn't ugly or it's just it is different but it's not limiting or ugly like trying to check yourself internally um, yeah I, I think so. Yes. And then now, just before we kind of uh, switch um, topics, but one of the things I think that, um, uh, you know, as as I know, and now that I, um, speaking to people who just recently were pregnant, I was pregnant in 2020. <laughs> I had a pandemic oh, wow. baby. I had a totally. pandemic. <laughs> I had a baby. <laughs> I had a pandemic baby. Um, and so, you know, and, and, you know, I have a child that is, is uh, mixed. And so um, how would you uh, say for uh, parents who are dealing with children who are black or mixed um, with dealing with their hair? I know they have like now a whole series of different books um because i got a whole bunch of them during my baby shower uh -huh. everybody kept sending me all these books to like you know make my child comfortable with her hair before she even arrived <laughs> oh, <laughs> which yeah. i was oh, like, yeah. which i was like okay we don't even know <laughs> what you know we, don't, we haven't even met her yet but you know everybody's already yeah. prepar preparing her for you know uh dealing with the uh, the pressures of society so you know which i you know which i had uh, also a little bit of mixed feelings about because i was just like like she's just a baby and now you know like thrown We're into like the lion, lion the lion's den you know like that's what right. i felt like um Jeez. so how <laughs> yeah so how do you how do you make your children 
um, that are black or mixed feel, you know, um, comfortable with their hair because it seems the something that they're going to have to confront like almost right away. Oh yeah, yeah. Hair is it's a crazy thing. So, and I have a daughter. I have a daughter as well, and um, and she has um, a, a different texture than mine. You know. Um, and when I say texture, so she has something they, I don't know who came up with this stuff, but it's called 4C hair. So, so 4C mm-hmm. hair is the really, uh, is, is the hair, when I say that it can stick straight up in the air, like if it, it can literally stick straight up in the air. Mm-hmm. It does not, it, it has a strong curl pattern. Um, but so for her, um, we do our hair together. And so she she knows and is empowered on how to control her and how to make her hair pretty and, you know, and buy her nice things to put in her hair. The more you embrace it and have her involved, the better. The more she's not empowered or disempowered or she doesn't know how to do her hair, she doesn't understand her hair, she doesn't know the product to put in her hair, that's when the problems come in. That's when the problems come in. But if she's in control, she knows what to do. She has all these different ways she can do her hair. And she now, you know, she's got, she's going to get that little sassy girl stance. She'll be good. She's okay. She'll be okay. (laughs) But she's got to be, she's got to have that empowerment though. You know, you can't have her in that stance of, I don't know what to do with my hair. My hair is so ugly. I don't know what, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to do it. Like that's when the problems come. Yeah. Yeah. So start early. So start early. Cause I mean, this is, this is for girls of all ages, but definitely for, for girls that have curly hair, um, you know, it, it's, she can do more with her hair, but now we have to teach her all those things. And that's kind of the double edged sword, right? You, you can do more with it, but if you don't know that, then you, now you're limiting yourself because you don't know. Right, <laughs> it's kind right. of like having an Apple phone and all you think of, all you can do is make a phone call with it. <laughs> yeah, no, yes. <laughs> you can do a whole lot more, but you have to be aware. You have to know what buttons to push and all that stuff. That's the same thing, especially when you talk about young girls with curly hair. You got to teach them early. And that's what we didn't, that's what, well, let's see. When I was growing up, that's what we did. Like, I remember me and my sisters, we did our own hair like at, as early as eight, oh, nine. Wow. Mm-hmm. By 10, 11 years old, oh, we were we were doing pressing combs and curling irons and all that stuff. Wow. Early. You guys started really early. <laughs> we started early. But then, but then um, people started, you know, not letting their children do stuff on their own. And that's, these are the people, who, these are the kids we have today. So, um, girls don't maybe like, and I'm guilty of it too. My goodness. Like my daughter, she should be doing her own, like she's nine. She should be doing her own hair, but I still do her hair or I take her to the braid shop. Now, how much do you think braids cost? Mm, it depends, I guess, how, uh, on the, you know, how elaborate, I guess I've heard of them cons- at least costing like a hundred or up. So yeah yeah Mm -hmm. my my just i just paid 250 dollars from a girl for my daughter's braids to be done Mm -hmm. and it's ridiculous because you know it involves oh my god black hair is just so complicated so it involves adding hair (laughs) as well but um so you're not you're paying for the braid you're paying for the artistry the time and then the hair but but my daughter you know she doesn't do her own hair and so does she feel like she's, you know, but she doesn't really have a problem with her hair though, but, but she should be doing her own hair. So I would say for your daughter, start her, just not doing her whole head right now, but when she's like two and three years old, give her a brush and let her put, it may look kind of crazy, but let her put some ponytails in her own hair. You know what I mean? Like start Uh giving her some control early, not full run, but start early, I would say. Yeah. And yeah, she's going to so, love her hair. She's going to love it. Yeah. Yeah. So 
So then giving, um, I guess, children awareness and uh, comfort and um, and feeling that they have, um, I guess, that they're in the driver's seat, um, so to speak, of their hair um, yes. will will help them build confidence because they they see that, oh, if, you know, if I want a certain hairstyle, oh, I can do it. You know, I'll just learn how to do it versus they feel limited and kind of, um, you know, one of the things. Uh, I guess uh, I'm going to relate this to something kind of odd and awkward, um, but uh, as being like, um, uh, just because I, I guess I'm thinking about Halloween, uh, vampires, <laughs> where they're kind of uh, locked into a look and, you know, they could cut their hair, but it just grows back um, instantly. <laughs> um, so uh, understanding that you aren't um, locked into a certain look gives them oh, the, confi- the, the, the confidence yeah. um, to be, mm-hmm. you know, uh, whoever they want to be. Um, you, yeah, you, that was- <laughs> you said it right there. Do not lock yourself into a look. That goes exactly in line with the versatility performance aspect of what I'm saying. And and here's another example of that, which is which has really led to a problem with Black women in swim class. They don't mm-hmm. want to get their hair wet. Yes. Mm-hmm. So they don't take swimming. And they got a whole generation of people who don't know how to swim because of hair. Come on. It's ridiculous. <laughs> so yes. and we should what, learn how to swim with the climate change. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So what yes. am I saying? What am I saying? Because you know, that was that whole culture of you better get your hair wet. You better you better keep your hair straight. Your hair is gonna get nappy. You know, <laughs> like like that was the culture. It's changing because now you go swimming, you keep it moving, but that goes with in with what your daughter can can now just maybe her generation won't even have this nonsense to deal with. You get your hair wet. Well, hey, baby, you know what to do. Just twist it here and there. Boom. Wrap it up. That's it. Mm-hmm. Put it in a ponytail. You know, you know, what do you do? Tools. Your mm-hmm. hair does not limit you. You need to know what to do with your hair. <laughs> and even say a given time. Because it's true. When you, when, when a white hair gets wet, it does something. It doesn't stay exactly the same as dry hair. Mm-hmm. And then people know what to do. And then same thing for black hair. You just have to know what to do. And for black hair, all you got to do is throw that hair in two braids, keep it moving. That's it. But they yes. got to know that. They have to know that and feel okay with that. And that's the part that I think where we are now. We're good with that now. But back in the 80s and the 90s and the 2000s, I'm not getting my hair wet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, that was yeah, definitely that um, was uh, the way that people looked at it. And so, right. you know, one of the things I was going to ask you was about the controversy of black hair. But it even seems, in some ways, that the controversy is not just contributed. Um, by you know non-blacks but also blacks themselves um oh, uh, oh. so it was a i guess a, a multi um uh i guess multi-racial um controversy um mm-hmm. mostly i would say put on uh black women because you know uh, you know, I've never, of course, been uh, a black man, but, you know, I, I think they have it maybe a little bit easier because you can just uh, shave your oh, head yeah. and go or, you know, and, and also, well, you know, yeah, most, yeah. Yeah, yeah, most men are most men are not trying to, like, you know, blow dry yeah. their hair and all this stuff. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. Well, so, yeah. We, we, like women, all women of all cultures, you know, you know, hair, hair is your is your ring, is your crown jewel, whatever. And so, yeah, hair hair kind of says it all, but, um, but for black women, it's like, what do you do with your hair? You don't want to cut it off. Like, well, some people do, <laughs> some people wear small right. crop styles and you can do that too. You, you know, you can rock, you can rock a crop style and look very good, but you have to have the right shape head. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is, this is true. This no. is true. <laughs> no, you don't know that until all your hair is off and then you got to let it grow. I don't know. So, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. And speaking so, of that, yeah. And speaking of that, um, I know that um, uh, just the, the black beauty industry is up to, I think it was like in, in 2021 this past year, it's like up to $1.5 trillion. Brilliant. You know, yeah. I, I, I think a lot of people don't realize they, um, I think uh, this is like a, a stereotype that I think is like uh, always floating around. I think it's starting to maybe dissipate very slowly. 
Um, but a lot of people didn't think that, you know, Black women were spending too much time taking care of themselves. Um, but the, the, uh, but the, uh, you know, but the, uh, the finances is, yeah, yeah. But the finances like trillion, it's almost up to like our national debt. <laughs> right. So that's, an, you know, that's another misconception. Particular. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. Yes. People didn't, people don't realize that black women spend the most, the most I'll money taking care of themselves. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll tell you what, I will match my product archive library arsenal against anyone's. <laughs> <laughs> I've got so much crap. And as I, oh, I buy this. Oh, it's a pretty bottle. Oh, let me smell it. Oh, blah, blah, blah. is this going to work? Because, you know, we have edge gel, edge cream, butters, and shea moisturizers, and serums, and spritzers and leave-in creams and leave-in sprays. And I mean, we have so much to put on our hair and we have all the styles. So that's why we have so much product. Now, the problem with the product has another level in that black people don't own the, the, the distribution industries of the product. Mm-hmm. So outside of Jenny Cap, the Jenny Cap is black owned. But that's kind of that's kind of tragic in that if 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 black people owned that that market that industry um, or at least had more on the economic side of it I mean we're on the consumer side of it for sure mm-hmm. um, yeah. but the economic side of it is tremendous it's huge um, and I'm not sure how that all went down back in the eighties. You had product like Stay Soft Row and um, Namaste and Afro Sheen and Proline. Well, those are all black owned companies. Well, those are all gone. They're all gone. And now you do have some, you do have some black owned companies that are making some product, but mm-hmm. I, I just don't know where all this product comes from, but it is just tons of it. You, you can not go, I can see this in the city of Chicago for example, even Oakland or any urban type of uh, setting, there is a, what you call a beauty supply on every corner. Mm-hmm. Now, when I go, now I'm in Chicago, so if I go on the south side of Chicago, I see that. It's crazy. It's a beauty supply on every corner. But I have to say, I love the beauty supply. <laughs> beauty <laughs> supply is a mech guy. It's wonderful. It's, everything is in there. Um, but you go on the north side of Chicago, which is mainly where um, not so many black people live. Not not as many, but actually, I mean, the north side of Chicago is very multicultural, but mainly white people, but ma- but also multicultural as well. But the point is, there are very few, if any, beauty supplies. This is kind of a crazy thing to notice. So the beauty supplies are definitely a thing for black mm-hmm. hair. Mm-hmm. And your daughter, when she gets big enough, she's going to want to go to beauty supply. <laughs> now, you get larger companies like like Sally Beauty and even Walgreens. You know, Walgreens, they have a, a nice selection of product from the accessories to the protection to the actual wet goods. Anything you need, they got it. And you're going to need something all the time because you're going to run out. Yeah. Now, now, um, I guess uh, one of the things, and you know, this is just from workplaces, um, just leading into more of the uh, Crown Act side. Um, uh, with all these, I, I guess, um, the uh, flexibility and dexterity of uh, black hair, um, a lot of uh, African Americans, and uh, this is mostly, I'll just say, I'm just going to always include women because I don't think men are really dealing with this as much. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> um, and so, a lot of Black women, when they are in an office setting, um, I'm interested to see now that we're in this pandemic and how it plays out remotely, but I think it still is going to play out um, in similar ways, just because we are on video and things like that, that uh, many um, African and American women and Black women feel that they need to uh, have their hair uh, just straight um, to uh, fit into the office culture. Now, 
Um, and that has always, uh, or I guess I'd say for general, that was the standard of what is professional. And so that is something that I guess um, that I see a lot. It's not necessarily that people mind if you want to go and do something different with your hair. Most people are not getting upset. It's only really when it comes into um, in employment or in uh, some cases, if, as we've seen the stories, uh, educational institutions, um, high schools and schools, and unfortunately, in some cases, even at the elementary school level. Um, right. And so I guess how I guess um, is there such a thing as professional hair? Um, in terms of just the structure of it being straight or non-straight, no. I think that's the whole point of the Crown Act law. Like you need to accept my hair if it is not chemically or intentionally straightened. You need to accept my hair. I mean, just like you have to accept the fact that I have a nose on my on my face. You have to accept this, I, you know. And it's not, and and you and you're only not accepting it because it's something that you learned. And you, so this is we should not be accepting that from from a human standpoint. We shouldn't accept this kind of non scientific nonsense. I don't like that hair because because it doesn't because it's not straight. I mean, wh why? Like, no, there's no scientific thing, and that's a social construct. So there's no such thing as professional non-professional hair. Now, there is such thing as a professional style, right? Mm -hmm. I, I do think that you have to be groomed. You can't be, you know, you just like for white hair, it shouldn't be oily. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> uh, black hair, it, it needs to be groomed. I mean, we, as we just said uh, just before, I mean, we are all about <laughs> keeping it together now. So, so it has to be groomed. You need to brush it, groom it, comb it, moisturize it, do something with it. Now, mm -hmm. um, then we get into the nuances of people not having good styles or bad styles <laughs> but you do yeah. need to style your hair you do need if you're going to be in a professional world you need to style your hair so that means if you have a natural curly look you're african-american you have a natural curly look, you gotta have a style because you can't like not have a style and say oh you don't like me because it makes my hair no no you do have to have a style come on you do have to have a style you know, so what does that what does that mean? Well, maybe you can have it in a nice little natural fro, like a little natural, you know, maybe cropped on these sides and a little bit coming to the front, like a little bang look. You know, that's pretty, that's cute. Or mm -hmm. you can have some twist and then have the twist bundled up into like a bun, and that's very professional. There should be nothing wrong with that style when it's even in its natural state. So I think that's where um, diversity and inclusion departments and hopefully companies that, that, that saw the civil unrest and sort of get the whole problem, um, if they can have a diversity and inclusion department or, or, or something in their HR book playbook that they didn't have before 2020, now they have it now, um, that they can understand that, you know, this crown act law and this hair thing, you just can't go around telling people, oh, your, your hair's not acceptable. Like you just, you're going to find yourself in a lawsuit maybe. So you got to look, you, you know, you don't want to do that. So maybe what they could do is, is maybe have um, for everybody, maybe make some rules for everybody or don't make any rules. For, for, for anyone. Um, and that's to the extent of what professional hair in a workplace can, how you're going to enforce it. I, I don't know how you're going to enforce it, but the rules for me have to be applied to everybody, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and definitely it cannot be, uh, you have to straighten your hair. Now, what happens in the real world is um, attractive people, people who know how to groom themselves, people who look good, they're going to make it. This is kind of how I think it's a human thing. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, yes, that's true. Unless, unless you are, unless you have a skill set that is like super mathematician geeky style, yes. and you don't have to worry about your grooming. You, if you want to be in a corporate setting where you're dealing and talking to people every day, you're influencing people every day. People are looking at you every day. Um, likeability comes into play. And, and if it looks like you don't take care of yourself, people aren't going to like you. Right. Now, <laughs> so <TV> days, <laughs> yes. They're not going to want to be around you. I don't know if they're going to like you or not, but they're not going to be around you because I know, I, you know, come on. So, so, um, I would say to any African-American woman who's in a professional setting, corporate world, what have you. And you want to wear your hair natural, which is completely, you're right. Create some nice styles. And no one would even know that it's natural or not natural, but you do have to have some nice styles. And that could be what we would call professional hair. Yeah. Yeah. That makes, that makes uh, perfect sense that yes, everybody must groom themselves if they're going to be working in the professional world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you should you should be you should be doing it anyways even if you're just at home but uh, you no know way. but definitely if you're presenting and out there in the public you should definitely groom yourself. <laughs> no way. No way. Yes. Um I guess one of the big things is that you know a lot of people um uh are not aware um of the crown act but why should everybody care because currently what they have i think the last report that i looked at is that the crown act has only passed in 14 um states and it's uh, still being considered by the other 36 so it may or may not pass um which is you know um it's great that it's uh, passed in these 14 but it's still you know uh we still have a ways to go um, so why should people care who are either, um, you know, uh, black or non-black? Yeah, I, I think that the more equity, I think we're learning this definitely here in Chicago. I think we're learning this. The more equity there is among us all, the more freedom of peace of mind that we have among the many. Everybody's not going to have peace of mind ever. ever. That's just human condition. But we want more people to live with, we should all want more people to live in equity. Uh, and that's what the Crown Act law represents. You know, I, if I can't earn my, if my earning potential is connected to my natural hair, it comes out of my head, meaning my natural hair is going to make it's going to relegate me to a ten dollar hour job for the rest of my life. Uh, that's pretty horrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, um, so, uh, if I am a CEO, if I'm an entrepreneur, you know, more and more, it, it, it's, and a lot of people are their own. They're, they're going to their own business, like these apps like TaskRabbit and Grubhub, like people are, are becoming their own person. But the more everyone can earn, the more everyone can benefit from those earnings of the greater earnings, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, having five people with all the money and then sprinkling $5 among 2 million people, there's not a lot of generation of wealth going on with that uh, equation, right? Mm -hmm. So the Crown Act law is specifically about, I mean, it's it's a feel good thing too. I mean, we should all kumbaya be happy, but, but it's really an equitable thing. It's about this person will not be able to get a job if she wears her hair like this. Now, is that right? And forget about it being right or not, you know, she will not be able to raise a family because the majority of black women, at least, like, I think it's like 70 or 80 percent are single family or single parents. So how is this person going to raise a family, have a household when her hair will dictate 
how much money she's going to make. This is one more thing for her to worry about. So everybody should be like, no, 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 that's, that's not good. <laughs> we need to, <laughs> we have got to do better because something as silly and stupid as, okay, your hair is not straight. Your hair's, your hair's curled. Okay. I don't like you. Or your hair's not straight. Okay. Then you can't get this job. So, you know, everyone should care because everyone should want equity. When everyone has equity, we all do better. Because now that whole earning potential goes up for more people. And now we can all, you know, spend money among more people. Because that's really where we're going. I mean, this is becoming more and more of a society of independent entrepreneurs doing mm-hmm. things. They, they have jobs, but then they also have these little side gig hustle things too. <laughs> yes, yes. So the only also, way... Yeah. Yeah. So the only way that type of world is truly going to work, I mean, I can't order Grubhub if I don't have, if I don't have disposable income, I just can't do it. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, you know, the Jeff Bezos is of the world. Even those guys, like everybody should want equity that the summation is um, a greater um, participation of uh, this whole thing that we call laissez-faire economics, you know, we, we mm-hmm. have got to have equity at the very, very, very rudimentary basic levels. And if it's, if we're talking about hair, that too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, I know. I could. It's money. It's about the money. Okay. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> so, so let's yeah. just stick with that. Mm-hmm. And then, and then we can, you know, do the thing because it's the right thing to do as well. Um, But maybe people won't get that part right off. Yes. Unfortunately. (laughs) <laughs> yes. No, no, no. I think people, yeah. Uh, yeah. Cause I always, you know, um, one of the reasons I wanted to do this topic was because I was just like, I can't believe that like hair is such a barrier <laughs> for so yes. many other things in life. Right. Like, yes. you know, it's, yes, it, it's, it's crazy to me. So I was like, we have to get to the, the you know, uh, pun intended, I guess, or the root of this. <laughs> so, yeah. maybe, maybe that should be the name of of the show. The, the getting to the roots. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. I guess in, in, in all your experience, uh, you know, dealing and working with black hair. Now, you know, you've been doing it for some decades. Um, yeah, what is the most what What is the most remarkable thing that you have learned? Um, during your time in working with um, uh, black women and about uh, black hair? Um, Just the unsung skilled artists who are working in this space, who have gone, who died, they're here, they're everywhere, and you and I don't know them. Be, and I go back to the fact that, you know, we don't really own the greater global economics of it all. So there's doors that we'll just never go through, you know, mm-hmm. but there are just so many hairstylists. I mean, people who, I mean, braiders, uh, they're just people who have been doing their hair all their lives. And you come across um, these different people um, through my professional side of things. I just come across all these different people and their skill set with black hair. Um, I remember one time I had my hair, uh, I went, I was going on a cruise and I had to have my hair braided. And two, I, I didn't think they could do it, but they said they were going to do it. They did my hair in 30 minutes. They braided my hair in 30 minutes. One wow. girl took one side, another girl took another side. And their fingers looked like little bitty, like little, looked like little machines. They were like, <laughs> <laughs> they were like, I mean, it was like amazing. Like, like maybe someone should develop a machine. <laughs> <laughs> because uh because their little hands were moving um just stuff like that 
those are the things of um because it's in this really closed world of black hair that only we know about it, and it's just a norm for us but it really is miraculous kind of crazy cool stuff like maybe there should be a reality show or i don't know but <laughs> it, it is um just the stuff that goes on in these hair salons the artistry this the knowledge the talent and you know it just goes it's just you know it's just normal it's just normal <laughs> So that's um, the stuff I would have to say. I would have to give a shout out to everybody out there, uh, the black hair care, I guess, service providers, you know, shout out to them because <laughs> they're out there every day getting doing people's hair, you know, getting your hair did. <laughs> you know, they're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so in in closing, um, I'd like you to finish this sentence. Uh, for black people, hair isn't just hair. Um, it's survival or, or what is the word I'm looking for? Um, or rejection. You're either going to survive and fall in line or you're going to reject the norms and then maybe you won't survive <laughs> you know you'll sort of you'll be um looked at i mean but with the crown act law and the natural hair movement is sort of putting a damper on that but we have not arrived as they say so it's either survival or rejection mm -hmm. yeah that's the reality i like yeah, that yeah i like that yeah, it shows the seriousness of uh, of uh, the Crown yeah. Act and and what people are dealing with um, mm -hmm. on a day to day basis. I love that answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you so it's much. Uh, <laughs> yes. Well, thank you so much for your time. Um, so thank you, Jennifer, for your time and insight. It's if you'd like to learn more about Miss Atkins, go to JennyCat dot com. If you have a passion for an unserved community, a social justice problem, or simply want to change minds, contact Project Good Work at projectgood.work to start your project of change today. To our listeners, thanks for tuning in to Project Good. We're focused on what matters. <laughs>